Welcome back to our thought for the day. It's really brilliant to be back with you again. And I'll be really loving being able to connect with people in our town, in our church or in other churches, and just to share a little bit about what the Bible says and just something to encourage us. I said yesterday that all this week I'm going to attempt um, some sort of isolation challenge as these things that float around social media. Uh, yesterday was the toilet roll keepy uppy challenge and, uh, and I'm sure that you all went home and practiced or left your city and practiced yourselves. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to go on to a biblical challenge, but a positive biblical challenge as well. There's lots of challenges that are negative that we face and we just want to kind of dial it back and, and change the tone and think of some of the positive challenges that are in the Bible. So our first challenge today involves this, a teapot. And we're going to take this and the idea is we're going to fill this up with water and then using only my mouth, I'm going to blow the water out of this spout all the way into a cup. Who knows what will happen? I imagine it won't go very well. But let's go and do that now. Well, you can see that didn't quite go according to plan. It was much harder than I made it look. But uh, it's reminded me, just that daily challenge from the internet reminded me of something uh, that Jesus said that I thought was really, really important. And I'll read to you a few verses from the Bible. Luke chapter 11, verses 9 to 12 say this. Jesus has been talking about that importance of being persevering in prayer. And he says, so I say to you, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? And this is a really interesting uh, teaching on prayer. Jesus often will say, a very challenging, very direct things that make the reader sort of sit up. All this talk of scorpions and snakes is designed to make the, the fathers in the crowd or even the mothers thinking of their husbands think, well, of course not. That's not how a loving father behaves. Jesus is talking about the importance of coming to God with prayer requests. And Jesus uses three imperatives, three phrases that have got a lot of power and oomph behind them. He talks of asking, he talks of seeking, he talks of knocking on the door. And then he goes on to say, those who ask will receive, those who seek will find, and those who knock on the door, the door will be open to them. The whole point of this teaching, especially when you think of that sort of challenging analogy of evil fathers not giving to their children, the teaching Jesus is giving is really about how the character of God is good, that God is a good, generous God, and so we should come to him and ask for things. Now, what's all this got to do with teapots? and filling up cups of water. And why am I covered in water at the end? Well, here's why. Because you could read that first little bit that I've just read to you and think, well, there we are then. I can ask for wealth and health and God will give it to me. And that's not at all the teaching Jesus is making here. This is not at all the point he's making. What does Jesus tell us to ask for? What's he telling us to seek after? What's he telling us to bang on the door of heaven for? Well, verse 13 tells us the answer to that question. Jesus says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The what of this passage, the challenge of this passage, is to ask God every single day, fill me up like the cup and the teapot. Fill me to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. We're to seek and ask and knock on the door of heaven for the powerful anointing and guidance of God, the Holy Spirit, that he would fill us up to overflowing, that we will be full with the power and majesty of God's Holy Spirit. And what does a spirit-filled look like? Well, spirit-filled life look like, well, many things. 
but we're talking about spiritual gifts and their exercising, prophecy, speaking in tongues, healings, miracles, things like that. But not just that, an increase in spiritual fruit, kindness, gentleness, self-control. One doesn't go without the other. It looks like an abundant life lived to the full, a heart overflowing with love for Jesus Christ. It looks like the love of 1 Corinthians 13 welling up inside of us, keeping no record of wrongs, forgiving easily, going the extra mile. The spirit-filled life is one where the Christian goes from simple believer to passionate disciple. Like Jesus' original followers and millions and millions and billions that have come since. And so the positive challenge from today isn't to shove your face in a teapot, I wouldn't recommend it. But what I would recommend is starting every day saying, Lord God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. That's a positive way to start your day and I encourage you to continue the rest of this day asking that very simple yet powerful, profound request, knowing that your God is generous and he will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. God bless you and we'll see you tomorrow.